Hi, welcome to Let's Do Books. I'm Tara and you can email me at tara at thelesbianreview.com with any questions or comments or come join our Facebook group, The Lesbian Review Book Club. I'm joined today by Sheena, founder of The Lesbian Review and The Lesbian Talk Show and queen of all things in all of her domains. Welcome, Sheena. Oh, thank you, Tara. I didn't realize that you were going to introduce me quite as delightfully as that. I would have sent you a gift basket. (laughs) There's still time. (laughs) (laughs) So, you came on earlier this year, and we talked about our predictions for this year, and I totally missed something that was already going on, that if I had been looking at the different publishers' catalogs, I would have said, and also, fake relationships, they're back in a big way in the lesbian scene right now, so I thought it would be fun for us to get together and talk about what some of our favorite fake relationship books are. Fantastic. I love this trope. I think this is one of my most favorite tropes because you get that moment ultimately where people, where they realize that actually this is more than just pretend now. Mm-hmm. And that's the big payoff, right? Absolutely. So what criteria did you use when you were choosing your picks? I was like, how much did I love this book? And then I went, I love this book a lot. Let's put it in. (laughs) (laughs) That was pretty much it. (laughs) Well, I think for me, it was all of that. But also there are a couple of different types of fake relationship books because there are the books where the characters are in a fake relationship with each other and they fall for each other. Yes. And those are the ones that I love. And then there are also... There are two characters in a fake relationship and one of them falls for someone else for whatever reason, whether it's so there's the set piece by Catherine Lane. I actually really enjoyed this book. I didn't include it, but because it didn't fall in that other category of the people in the fake relationship falling for each other, it's about a woman who is a lesbian and pretends to be in a relationship with a, she's like a fake girl. She's hired to be a fake girlfriend for a soccer player and she ends up falling for his assistant. Oh, that kind of thing. Okay, but you see, I wouldn't classify that as a fake relationship book at all because it's not, it's not the two that are in the fake relationship that get married, you know, hook up. I've found that there are some books recently, and I'm not going to name names because I don't want to call anybody out, but where it looks like it's going to be a fake relationship, like the people in the fake relationship are going to fall for each other, and then that's not what happens at all. Oh. One of them ends up falling for someone else. Yeah, exactly. So, that frustrates me. No, I don't like that at all. We don't like that. No. Please, please, please. Don't do that. Blurb your books appropriately. Yes. And have better covers just while we're on the topic. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, Oh, covers. Oh, covers. How we love them. Yeah, we've got some spectacular ones coming up this year. Anyway, so fake relationships are fun because always it's 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 women who get together um who don't expect to to like one another, who don't expect to you know, they're not the typical type that are attracted to each other, they're not expecting anything other than often monetary compensation or some sort of uh compensation You know, like a green card or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about this dynamic for me as well is the author needs to take it from this kind of trade agreement and turn it into now a romantic thing. But the money aspect doesn't necessarily get resolved. So if one person is really poor, like a poor artist, for example, and the other one's a wealthy Mm -hmm. doctor, there's still the money discrepancy. So how does the author get over that? Right. Gee, is there going to be a book like that on your list of maybe books that you recommended? <laughs> it might. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but that's also a cool a cool thing for me is that how the author manages that process because that can make that can go so wrong. Absolutely. So, what's your first pick? My very first pick is Backwards to Oregon by Jay. Coincidentally, that is also my first pick. (laughs) Yes, I figured it would be. (laughs) All right. Do you want to read the blurb? 
No, no, you go ahead. Okay, so Luke, in quotation marks, Hamilton has always been sure that she'd never marry. She accepted that she would spend her life alone when she chose to live her life disguised as a man. After working in a brothel for three years, Nora Macaulay has lost all illusions about love. She no longer hopes for a man who will sweep her off her feet and take her away to begin a new respectable life. But now they find themselves married and on the way to Oregon in a covered wagon with 2,000 miles ahead of them. I love this book. I love this book so much. I actually almost chose Something in the Wine, also by Jay. And I know a lot of people would say Something in the Wine first, because that that one is also very much a fake relationship. It's a woman whose brother sets her up on a blind date, doesn't tell her that it's with another woman, and they're like, well, let's get back at him by pretending to be in a relationship. Whoops, they fall in love. Because of course they do. But Backwards to Oregon is just so good it's just it's my favorite fake relationship book it's almost my favorite book by jay it's like number two i think for me because damage control is my ultimate favorite i love the pretending to be a man aspect the burn is so slow to the romance as they get to know each other well the the pretending to be a man is definitely one of the reasons i this book is my favorite jay it is my favorite jay book okay the dynamic between the two lead characters, because they're not only pretending to the rest of the world that they're this couple, but Luke is pretending to Nora that she's actually a man. So there's all this this sort of duality and, and duplicity and delight going on. See all the three Ds. And I'm trying to remember, when, when they leave, does Luke know that Nora's pregnant? I don't remember. Luke, because she's already got a child. Nora's already got a child. Yeah. But I don't remember if Luke knows. It wasn't a big deal either way. Yeah. But it's. Anyway, I was just going to say if you read only one book off this list, you have to read this one. It's so good. Okay, so what is your, your next one since I stole your first one? Ha! Huh. Uh, my next one is Far From Home by Laura Lee Brown. And the blurb for this is actually in the first person, which is unusual, but the book is also in the first person, so it works. My name is Rachel. I'm straight, I think. I also have a mountain of student loans and a smart mouth. I wasn't serious when I told Perry Sadashiv that I'd marry her. It was only party banter, except Perry needs a green card and she's willing to give me a breather from drowning in debt. My off-the-cuff idea might not be so terrible. We get along as friends. She's really romantically cautious, which I find heartbreaking. She deserves someone to laugh with. She's kind and calm and gorgeous. A couple of years with her actually sounds pretty good. If some of Perry's kindness and calm rubs off on me, that'd be a bonus, because I'm a mess. Anorexia is not a pretty word. And my little ways of keeping myself in, of keeping control of myself of the world aren't working anymore. And if I slip up, Perry will see my cracks. Then I'll crack, which means I gotta get out quick before I fall in love with my wife. This book is fabulous. So this is a rich girl, poor girl story. And their relationship also built really slowly in this one because they go from like, they really are strangers at the beginning. It's just like, she just makes a crack at a, at a party about like, yeah, I'll marry you. Why not? But Perry is a woman from India who's working in the US and she doesn't want to stay at her job she wants to go work somewhere else but her green card is tied to her job and so if she can find someone to marry her then she can stay in the u.s she can go work where she actually wants to rachel has so much student debt it's ridiculous and but they you know pretend they have this whirlwind romance move in together right away and they get to really like each other and they get to know each other fairly well except for the anorexia part and actually the anorexia is really interesting because with it being told in the first person, we get to see what happens as her illness gets worse and she doesn't realize it at the time. And so it's up to the reader. You really have to pay attention to what Perry is saying and what she's doing rather than Rachel's interpretations of what she's saying and doing. Because you realize that Perry is falling for her the same way she, Rachel is falling for Perry. And it's just, it's so beautiful. And it was one of my favorite books the year before last. Hmm, that sounds really good. 
It's super good. I highly recommend it. There is a review up at thelesbianreview.com. <laughs> you can check it out. You know, I don't read all your re- reviews because otherwise my book list would grow too exponentially. To be fair, I do the very same with you. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't It doesn't work quite as well when we talk about books to each other, though. Then, you know, I end up with like 10 new books. <laughs> Every time we do a podcast together, I end up reading at least one of the books that you talk about and falling in love with them. What is your next book? Okay, you're not going to have this one because you haven't read this one. Crossing the Wide Forever by Missouri Vaughn. So this ties in really nicely with Backwards to Oregon. If you love that one, you'll love this one. It's a similar storyline, except that there's no pretending to be a man in terms of, there is that trope but the both women know that the she's a woman right but it's a similar sort of feel to the book and it's a similar kind of a storyline but it's different enough that i really loved it for its own rights okay so here's here's my synopsis for it cody escapes her father's beatings by taking her sister and leaving her she stops at her aunt's place and leaves her sister there with her, the aim of leaving Arkansas to join her brothers in California. The road is dangerous, though, and so she dresses like a man as protection. Lily departs from the great city of New York after her uncle dies, leaving her a homestead on the frontier in Kansas. With the prospect of becoming the local school teacher for the tiny town near her homestead, she heads west, despite her well-off family's protestations. Because you must remember, she's a single woman traveling to the middle of nowhere to go live by herself, right? What Lily doesn't disclose to her family is how little she desires to follow the traditional path of marriage, and she just cannot understand why her sister swoon over handsome boys. Cody and Lily meet in Independence, Missouri, and their stories become intertwined as fate pushes them together. But that's just the beginning of the story. Sprinkle in some adventure, a sizzling slow burn romance, and some unexpected characters, and you have a really great read. That's it. That's the beginning of my review to this book. That sounds real good. It is real good. Anyway, so they get together, and they pretend to be married to as a kind of a protection thing. To keep Lily safe, and to give Cody something to do, and you know, there's an attraction between them, and then it's all just so cute. So, for my next one... Yes. I'm going to read my own blurb because I don't think the blurb that goes with this book actually gives enough to work with for people. So, my next book is Casting Lacey by L. Spencer. Queen Kincaid has known for a while that she's a lesbian and she's ready to let the world in on her secret, but as the lead on a wildly popular legal drama and her marriage to a man having only recently ended, she feels the world may not be ready to hear it. Luckily for Quinn, her publicist has a plan. They'll hire another actress to pretend to be her girlfriend, one who will be happy to sign a non-disclosure agreement and take the money and surefire boost to her own career. Lacey Matthews lost everything that mattered to her when she came out publicly, both her girlfriend and the soap opera role she'd had since childhood. It's been a year, and she's learned the hard way that L.A. isn't everything it's cracked up to be since she's still looking for work. Quinn Kincaid's proposal might be absurd, because seriously, pretend to be her girlfriend only to break up a reasonable time after Quinn comes out? But Lacey can't ignore the money, the networking opportunities, or the chance to move out of the cheap hotel she's living in and into Quinn's luxurious guest house. So what if Quinn's incredibly hot? A job's a job, right? I love this book because not only is it a fake relationship book it's a celebrity romance and celebrity romances are my crack so when i saw this coming out i knew i had to read it and it didn't disappoint quinn and lacy have this really rocky antagonistic start because lacy's actually kind of a dick like after that year of looking for work and having her girlfriend leave her and all that she's just like super rude but they're thrown together like they've they've they they have this agreement and then Quinn breaks her arm and needs help taking care of herself and it sort of throws them together in a way that actually works pretty well. And the other thing I love about this is that it's also a coming out story and there aren't many of those anymore nor do we even necessarily need them that much anymore but it's interesting when a celebrity comes out because the stakes are so much higher than they are for regular people like you and I. And so that 
drive some of the tension in a way that's really interesting. So if you like celebrity romances and you like fake relationships, I totally recommend this book. That's definitely on my radar. Like when I saw that one coming out, I was like, dude, this book we need, I need this book, right? So that's definitely on my radar. See, too many reading, you know, books to read, Tara. It's all your fault. I know. <laughs> we, we did it to ourselves. Uh, what's your next book? My next book, I'm pretty sure is also on your list, which is Tricky Wisdom by Cameron Ard. It's next on my list in the same spot. <laughs> <laughs> so this book, I dibs this book because I read this book first and I introduced you to this book. So therefore, this is my book. Ha. But you, you know, to be fair, Backwards to Oregon was your book that you introduced me to. So, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. Tricky Wisdom, though, is absolutely one of my favorite books, like, ever. Um, I just love it. It, the, I love the the dynamic between the two main characters, and it's not a traditional marriage of convenience in that there's a very small part of the story where the two main characters pretend to be girlfriends and really only to make the one's best friend jealous so that she'll realize that she's actually in love with Darcy, right? Yeah. So... It's a relatively small part of the story, but it's an important part of the story because it's during that time that the two main characters realize that they actually have feelings for each other. And it's just so beautifully done. Okay. I don't like my synopsis. Do you have a synopsis there? I have a synopsis. So I also don't like the book synopsis for this one because it doesn't show the most. So I'm going to read the one that I did for my review at Curve Magazine. Okay. If that's cool, because I think it's probably the most comprehensive one. Mm. Darcy Wright is off to Harvard Medical School, never having told her family that she's a lesbian or her very straight best friend Taylor that she's in love with her. Ready to start the next chapter in her life, she's found an apartment with a roommate within walking distance of her classes, but nothing could have prepared her for Olivia Boyd. Olivia has rules upon rules and opinions about everything. She makes no effort to hide her disdain for Darcy as soon as she meets her and is shocked to find Darcy sitting in the same class at school. As months go by, they settle into a rhythm of barely tolerating each other until Taylor drops the ultimate bomb on Darcy. She has a girlfriend and thinks she's in love. All seems to be lost until a miscommunication makes Taylor think Olivia is Darcy's girlfriend and Olivia agrees to come home with her for Thanksgiving and act the part of her devoted lover. Mm-hmm. And the dynamic between the two main characters and the, the dialogue and the ice queen, because uh, Olivia's, Olivia's an ice queen of note. And it's just, everything is snappy and sexy and uh, so good. Cameron Knight is a genius. She is a genius. And I kind of like that, like Darcy's actually super likable, right? But she's kind of an idiot sometimes. So that you're watching and it's like, you are missing these signals that are being dropped like she's so bad at reading taylor and olivia sometimes and i just kind of wanted to shake her but it is lovely because she's lovely also this book like i want to high five cameron eyed because this book has the worst first kiss scene and I don't mean like it's badly written. I mean that first kiss is so bad and then it's followed by one of the hottest things I've ever read. Yes. Absolutely. And that that rings true. I mean, that's just so wonderful, isn't it? Because like, who has a perfect first kiss, I ask you? No one. I know. Ever on earth. <laughs> Except literally every character in Las Vegas ridiculous. <laughs> it's true it's true okay so what is your next one since i stole it okay so my last book is who'd have thought by g benson and the blurb for that is top neurosurgeon samantha thompson needs to get married fast and is tight-lipped as to why and with over two hundred thousand dollars on offer to tie the knot no questions asked cash strapped er nurse hayden perez isn't about to demand answers the deal is only for a year of marriage, but Hayden's going into it knowing it will be a nightmare. Sam is complicated, rude, kind of cold, and someone Hayden barely tolerates at work, let alone wants to marry. The hardest part is that Hayden has to convince everyone around them that they're madly in love and that racing down the aisle together is all they've ever wanted. What could possibly go wrong? Okay. This book has it all. 
because not only does it have a marriage of convenience, there's an age gap. It's a rich girl, poor girl romance. It's a workplace romance. There's a thawing ice queen and it's a medical romance. So basically G Benson was like, I'm going to take all your jams. I'm going to gather all your jams up and I'm going to stuff them into one book. Here you go. God bless Sarah. That was me kissing my hand, <laughs> pretending to be G Benson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like it's ridiculous. It's just like super readable. It's fun to read. It has, the romance has a really slow burn to it because Hayden hates Sam when they first get together. They, they, it's not an enemies to lover story because Sam doesn't hate Hayden. Sam just doesn't think Hayden is relevant to anything <laughs> in her life ever. Even in the few times that they come across each other in the ER. But they have to go from this like, Hayden can't stand her to, oh, now they're living in Sam's condo together. And they slowly manage to build a friendship. And then from there, they build a romance. And it's quite lovely. And it takes a long time for Sam to share her reasons for why she hired Hayden in the first place. Because Hayden asks every so often, and she's like, I'm not ready to tell you. And it takes months and months. And when she does finally tell her, it's actually quite heartbreaking. Was the payoff worth it, though, waiting for, for that revelation? I think so. It was interesting. And I kind of wanted to high-five Sam, because good for her. But... I don't know. Like, it's... It's just a fun contemporary romance, and there's like, the the there's a good there's a good tension and chemistry happening along with that slow burn. So I think that was the uh, is the payoff worth it? Waiting so long for them to bang? Yes, <laughs> that's the payoff. Okay. That... No, I, I, no, that's fine. Um, I I can I can take or leave six in a book. I don't, you know, if it teaches me something about the characters, I'm all there. If it teaches me something new to add to my repertoire, I'm all there. But otherwise, you know, mm -hmm. I can take or leave six. It worked for them, I would say. Like, it was totally appropriate for the story. It worked well for them. And it made sense that it took so long because it was that, like, it wasn't one of those hate to love where because there's that amazing chemistry from the beginning because they hate each other so much that it turns into that really tempestuous, oh, we're going to go and have that hate sex that's crazy hot. Like, it's not like that at all. They instead have to kind of overcome and grow and, and build trust before they ever make it to the bedroom. But because of that, you believe that they're going to be together, right? Yeah, I do. And I would say the ending actually was not exactly what I expected, but it also worked really well and was totally appropriate for the characters. Okay. Cool beans. So, yeah. So what's your next book? By Mutual Consent, Tracy Richardson. Mm -hmm. So this book is... I actually reread it recently. Wow, well, try saying that fast. <laughs> no. <laughs> Re I reread it recently and really enjoyed <laughs> Wait, wait. I reread it recently and really recommend it. <laughs> oh! All the alliteration. I love it. Yeah, it's actually just so sweet. So, Joss McNabb is a cardiac surgeon and her mother decides she needs a wife because her mother was a supportive wife of Joss's dad and who was also a head of the cardiology department and a big shot in you know the same as his daughter's now following in his footsteps and her mother feels like the wife can support this career and really like help her grow and all that sort of stuff so mommy dearest goes and organizes like this fake wife and i, I say that in inverted commas this, this woman to to do the hosting and the smooth the rough edges you know and that is Sarah Young uh, artist and they have this kind of it's not an immediate chemistry so much but it's it's this thing that builds and while they both find each other attractive it's not it's not like oh wow I'm so gonna go you know take her into the back room which I appreciated I appreciated that it built I appreciated that there was the 
the time that it took for the relationship to happen, you know? Yeah. And because m- mother was meddling, the relationship almost kind of doesn't happen because there's, there is conflict around just not actually wanting this fake wife, you know? And I also like that just is this very wealthy surgeon and Sarah is a starving artist who's reliant on her bastard of a father for money. And so this job gives her independence from that, but ties her to Joss in a way. And so there's this money dynamic between them, which is like something that has to now be worked through and overcome as they actually do start a relationship. I loved the way Richardson did it. I loved her thoughtfulness in creating the the romance and in in making them both realize that actually there's more to this relationship than just money. That is a, that one's a really lovely story. And I thought it was interesting. It was an interesting play on the rich girl, poor girl thing because Sarah's a starving artist because her dad cuts her off. Like she's actually yeah. from isn't she from a fairly wealthy family too? Yeah, dad's very well off. He he owns this um, law firm that's doing extremely well but every time he gives her money there's this like price to pay for it yeah you know and so eventually he says when he discovers that she's got a job as this kind of fake girlfriend at public events um he cuts off and he's like okay that's it you're grown up now you've got a job and maybe it's not the the kind of job i would want for you but it's not i'm I'm not bankrolling your life anymore yeah, I remember, I haven't read that one in probably a couple of years, but I remember really, really enjoying it. And it's just, it's also a Butch Femme one, isn't it? It is. And and a Doctor Artist, which is also kind of fun. Oh, that's a good pairing. Mm-hmm. That's a really good pairing. And they have the most gorgeous holiday. So they go off on vacation, as the Americans say, together. And it's it's a sexy holiday. Yeah, that's a real good holiday. so what is your bonus one so my bonus book is actually a book that i have not read yet but that i am so excited to check out so i'm gonna include it anyway and it's actually another book by jay it's her latest book it's called just for show and this is the blurb What happens when an overachieving psychologist with OCD tendencies and an impulsive, out-of-work actress start a fake relationship? Claire Renshaw thought she had it all. A successful career as a couples therapist, a publishing contract for her self-help book, and a happy relationship. But her perfect world falls apart when her fiancé calls off their engagement. Because of that, even her book deal might be off the table. After all, readers don't want relationship advice from someone who can't even make her own relationship work. So Claire sets out to hire herself a fake fiancé. Lana Henderson, the actress who shows up to audition for the role, is not exactly Claire's ideal woman. Her frankness and the message she leaves everywhere drive Claire up the wall. At least she won't fall in love with someone like Lana. But soon... Lana starts to win her over with her big heart, tickle fights, and gasp carbs after six. The longer they pretend to be a love-struck couple, the less fake their kisses feel, and the more the lines between reality and role begin to blur. Once the book contract is signed, will they walk away, or is the relationship no longer just for show? I think that sounds delicious. That sounds awesome. Doesn't it sound so good? Like, mm. I love that it's kind of an... Like, it sounds like it's also just an opposite to tract book, and oh, and I do love a good contemporary romance by Jay, so I missed out the last couple, so I'm quite excited to pick this one up. I think I'm going to have to read it in the next few weeks. Nice. That sounds fantastic, and a good uh, note to end on, Tara. All right, that is all for this episode. Thank you so much, Sheena, for joining me. You are welcome, Tara. Thank you for having me. So, I'm Tara. You've been listening to Let's Do Books. Remember to email me at tara at thelesbianreview.com with your questions or comments. If you're an author who's interested in joining me on the show to talk about the lesbian you love or the trends that have you interested, please let me know. If you've enjoyed this episode, please check out the show notes where you'll find a Patreon link for the Lesbian Talk Show. Just a little bit would go a long way to cover hosting costs for Let's Do Books and the other great shows on the channel that are all geared towards queer women. 
Also, don't forget to join us at our Facebook group, The Lesbian Review Book Club, so you can talk to us about anything that you're reading and loving. You can also find me and all the other podcasters on the Lesbian Talk Show channel at our Facebook group, The Lesbian Talk Show Chat Group, where we're going to be having more and more video all the time, so you're going to want to come and check that out. To find this and many other great shows, all you need to do is search for The Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher. And don't forget to email Tara. Tara at thelesbianreview.com. Please email her. She likes it when you email. She gets very excited and then emails me that she got an email, <laughs> which is fantastic. And I love it. And she gets very excited because then she knows that people are listening. So email her. Thank you, Sheena. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. <laughs>